Hello, I'm Dr. Alan Weintraub, Medical Director of the Brain Injury Program at Craig Hospital. Rehabilitation after traumatic brain injury is a complex neurological process. It can be overwhelming to try to understand it all. The goal of this video is to provide you with the tools necessary to ask informed questions and participate in your loved one's care. After a severe brain injury, there's often a period of time when your loved one experiences either a partial or even complete disruption of consciousness. During this period of time, he or she may have lost awareness of not only themselves, but also have lost their purposeful ability to interact in meaningful ways within their environment. You may often hear clinicians use medical terms such as coma, vegetative state, the minimal conscious state, emerging consciousness, post-traumatic amnesia, or even the term post-traumatic confusion. During this video, we are going to closely examine the Rancho Los Amigos levels of cognitive functioning scale, which provides an observational and a much more descriptive way to better monitor your family members' changing condition as they progress through different levels of impaired or even emerging consciousness. A traumatic brain injury, or TBI as it is commonly referred to, causes damage to the brain. Damage to the brain's complex connections causes problems with how a person is able to think and interact with the world around him or her. Following a TBI, there are certain cognitive skills that are no longer functioning in the same capacity. These cognitive skills are consciousness, wakefulness, or awareness, attention, perception or observation, and recognition of information we see, hear, and feel speed at which information is processed, memory, reasoning and problem solving, and the executive processes which include the ability to plan, organize thoughts and activities, and self-evaluation. Cognitive skills build on each other. Here's an example. Let's say you're driving a car. As the driver, you must be aware and pay attention to your surroundings. You must perceive or make sense of what you are doing. If a ball rolls out in front of your car, that means there may be a child present. As the driver, you need to reason or anticipate that a child might run out after the ball. Then you must develop a plan of action, which is to break and watch for the child. Throughout this situation, you must process numerous pieces of information in a sequential order and quickly. The driving example may seem very routine or automatic, but following a traumatic brain injury, these required cognitive skills are no longer functioning in the same capacity. Familiar daily activities are no longer automatic or easy your family member will require help to complete daily activities. During the recovery process, you will see significant changes in how your family member functions in the world around them. Initially, there may be times when your loved one is awake but is not able to interact with you. As he or she progresses in the recovery process, they may be very confused, unable to pay attention, and unaware of where they are and what the date is. As time goes by, you should see improvements. Improvements can occur at a rapid rate, but usually they happen more gradually. The recovery process for traumatic brain injuries typically follows a general pattern. This general pattern of recovery is described in the Rancho Los Amigos Levels of Cognitive Functioning Scale. The scale helps to describe the cognitive changes observed as the brain recovers. In this video, we will describe the 10 levels of the scale and provide examples of individuals functioning at the various levels. It's important to note that each injury is unique and your family member may not match the description of each stage exactly. As your loved one progresses, you may see fluctuations between two levels, especially if they are fatigued. Keep in mind that not all people progress through all of the levels of cognitive functioning. Progress depends on the severity of the injury. Rancho Level 1, no response. After a severe brain injury, there is a period of time when there is complete unconsciousness and the person has no awareness of himself or herself. This is referred to as Rancho Level 1, no response. The brainstem is the lowest structure of the brain and serves as a bridge between the brain and the spinal cord. It is responsible for automatic functions such as breathing and motor reflexes. It also controls wakefulness, including eye opening and sleep-wake cycles. A severe level of impaired consciousness results when the messages from this area do not connect with the higher portions of the brain. You may hear this referred to as a coma. During this stage, an individual is watched for signs of consciousness or wakefulness. 
At this level, your family member's eyes are closed and he or she does not show any ability to follow commands, communicate, or even respond to pain. At this time, your loved one's treatment is focused on managing medical issues. Rancho Level 2 Generalized Response when a person is at Rancho Level 2 Generalized Response, they will open their eyes, but they still do not respond consciously to stimulation. You may hear this referred to as a vegetative state. At this time, the brain stem is automatically beginning to recover, but the connections to the higher brain are still impaired. During this stage, you will notice your loved one is able to open their eyes, have periods of wakefulness, and may have some return of a sleep-wake cycle. People in this stage are awake, but they're not aware of their surroundings and their attention is severely impaired. Your loved one may not be able to follow movement or focus on specific people or objects because he or she is having difficulty making sense of information around him or her. No verbal communication is present. During this stage, a person's responses are not intentional or thought out and are the same no matter what the task. For example, when a clinician rubs ice on an individual's arm, you would expect the person to pull away. Instead, at Rancho Level 2, the person may only tense up, breathe heavier, or show a chewing response. This video shows an example of someone who is at the vegetative or generalized response level. Take the ball. Take the ball. Hey Chris, look over this way. Chris, look over here. Hey Chris. Chris, look over to your left. Look over here, Chris. Hey Chris, over here. Am I clapping my hands right now? Look at the ball. Rancho Level 3 Localized Response At Rancho Level 3 Localized Response, the level of consciousness continues to improve. This condition is also referred to as minimal conscious state. At this level, your loved one will be awake more and for longer periods of time. His or her responses will be localized or specific. This might include steering in the direction of a sound or a voice, looking at a picture, grabbing toward a tube or catheter, or even pulling away from pain or discomfort. Verbal communication is still not present. Some persons at this level may indicate yes or no responses non-verbally. Responses remain inconsistent and delayed due to fleeting attention and slowed ability to process or make sense of what he or she sees or hears. Here's an example of someone who is at Rancho Level 3 localized response. Touch the ball for me. I want you to look up at the ceiling. Good, and look down at the floor. Look up at the ceiling, Clint. Good, and look down. Here's a cup. Show me how you use a cup. Uh-huh. Good. I'll take it back. I want you to look right at the cup for me. Look right at the cup. Look right at the cup for me. Good. Look right at the cup.
Now look right at the ball, Clint. Look at the ball. And last time, look at the ball for me. Look right at the ball. Can you look over at the ball? Good. Massage your face again. Okay. During this early stage of neurological recovery, there are things you can do to help your family member. You can talk in a calm, soothing voice. Talk as if they understand you and avoid talking about complex medical information. Remind your loved one who you are and what day it is. Tell them where they are. This is important because new information is not being remembered at this time. When touching your family member or providing care, explain what you are about to do. For example, say, I'm going to move your leg. Keep comments, questions, and commands short and simple. For example, instead of saying, can you turn your head towards me, say, look at me. Give your family member time to respond as responses are generally delayed. Allow up to 10 seconds to respond before repeating your request. Remember that your family member's behaviors are not intentional during this time. If they pull out tubes and don't respond to your request to stop, it is not a conscious decision to ignore your request. Rather, look at this as a positive sign of neurological recovery. Increased responses mean improved brain functioning. Provide small amounts of varied stimulation like TV, radio, or talking combined with periods of rest throughout the day. Finally, your family member is easily fatigued and needs plenty of rest. Therapy is hard work and rest can often be the best therapy. At Rancho Levels 1 through 3, your family member is going through the initial time of waking up. During these early stages, your loved one is learning to pay attention to life around them and make sense of information they see, hear, and feel. It is hard work and they will need plenty of rest. Make sure to work closely with your team members to learn how to determine what specific responses are as compared to random or reflexive responses. Ask questions, observe therapy sessions when possible, and share your observations with the team. In conclusion, we encourage you to learn all that you can about your family member's injury and recovery. We hope that this information has been helpful for you and lays the foundation for further learning. As your family member progresses through their recovery, you are encouraged to continue to ask questions. As you gain a better understanding of what is happening with your family member, you will be able to provide the support that he or she needs. We wish you the very best on this journey. Learn more at craighospital.org.